Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. many hundreds of years into the future. Earth has been invaded by creatures from a land lost thousands of years ago, Atlantis. Not exactly lost or disappeared, but we Earth people simply lost track of Atlantis. The Atlanteans have reappeared and are trying to rule Earth. Our story takes place in one small part of the United States, but we like to think it could have happened anywhere. Mother, everyone in town has agreed. We have got to get rid of Mr. Gorgon permanently. How can you? Atlanteans don't die like we do. We have to try everything, anything. There's got to be a way to kill them. In all my own days, I never dreamed I'd actually be wanting to murder somebody. It's the only way, Mother. Otherwise, our whole town will die. <laughs> Mystery drama, Invaders from Atlantis, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by G. Frederick Cruz and stars Arnold Moss and Don Scardino. Even though it is the year 2300, Parsons Corner hasn't changed that much in 300 years, partly because it was selected as a town worth preserving, as it was back in 1900. And partly because folks like to keep it that way. But now with everything being run from a satellite hovering over Washington, what's to become of the old-fashioned town? It's a question that's been bothering the town druggist, Seth Cook. So I'll let him give you the answer. Seth? There's been five generations of cooks minding the store here in Parsons Corner. My wife, Emma, does the prescriptions. My boy, Jason, helps out. Thank the Lord he was too young to be called up when... when the invaders come. But he was old enough to be angry when they sent Mr. Gorgon to our town to run it. Oh, but I'm... I'm getting ahead of myself. What happened was this. Emma, is that you? Yes, it's me, sir. I brought you today's paper. Well, it's hardly worth reading if you want real news. Well, you better read page one. It tells us what we have to do. I was just sitting here thinking about freedom, Emma. Get that done. You needn't shush me. They haven't taken over Parsons Corner yet. Oh, yes, they have. I saw Catherine this morning. Orders from that central committee on the satellite. But they closed the school where she teaches. Going to revise all the subjects. Oh, she must be boiling. Mm. Catherine's a good girl. Well, I hope she and Jason can get married soon. Any word about their license? Oh, it hasn't been cleared by the invaders yet. I understand there's a long waiting list. You heard what Jason said last night? No, no, he must have said it when I when I went out for a walk. It's not only marriage applications. He said sooner or later they're going to take over everything. Oh, that's Jason. Hi, Dad. No customers? Hello, Mother. Uh, business isn't anymore, you know that. This time of year when you were a little boy, why, I remember we'd make big money. Well, not anymore. I came straight here from Town Hall. Dad, we're in for it. Like everyone else, they're sending someone to our town. You sure? Sure. Mayor Randall showed me a code, Graham. What do they want with Parsons Corner? We're a, we're a dot on the map. I've been expecting it. Now that they've got the big cities like Washington and New York and Chicago and San Francisco, they're turning to us small fry. They want everybody obeying and praying to them. Well, everybody won't. We won't. Not in this town. Catherine and I were talking about it. 
Let him just try. Uh, you think people in this town are braver than anybody else, hmm? They're awful independent, Seth. If anyone reared up on their haunches, Emma, they'd be struck down just like our army was. Dad, we never got a chance to fight off the invaders. There wasn't any warning, no intelligence reports. I know. I've studied history. They launched the first strike from Galaxy Headquarters, and that was it. And we caved in, Jason. You were a baby. We just caved in. Could we do anything else? There was nothing left for the president to do but surrender. The man the invaders sent, his name was Mr. Gorgon. Well, that day I closed the store and rushed over to the town hall. The whole town was there. Mr. Gorgon was standing on the green. His clothes were a little different, made out of some synthetic galactic material. He was hammering something on the bulletin board. May I ask, sir, what you're doing? I am nailing up requirements. Duties of inhabitants of Parsons Corner for all to see. Uh, give me, please, those two sheets of paper there on the ground. I suddenly realized Mr. Gorgon hadn't turned around to talk to Sheriff Barnaby, standing right behind him. But he was looking at the sheriff out of a third eye. Smack dab in the back of Mr. Gorgon's head. Usually, Sheriff Barnaby, our directives are transmitted directly to people's brains from our satellite. But here I am instructed to use paper, hammer, and nails. What are we supposed to do with those? Read and obey. And who are you, sir? I am Mr. Gorgon. You are Sheriff Barnaby. This town of Parsons Corner is my responsibility. I will not need your services or that of Mayor Randall. The whole town was standing around and staring. Sheriff Barnaby wasn't a bit phased by that third eye in the back of Mr. Gorgon's head. He looked right into it and he said, I'd like to ask you by what authority you are taking control of our town. I am the duly elected sheriff here. By what authority? Do you have some identification? Only this. Let me show it to you. What is that? A flute? Not quite. <laughs> Mr. Gorgon had pointed a small silver-like tube at the sheriff and... Poof! Old Barnaby just disappeared. Word spread fast and... No one questioned Mr. Gorgon's authority after that. They keep coming into the store. I'm glad Jason is here to help out. Emma, they're not buying anything, can't you see? They've come here to talk. I bet there isn't one bottle of cough syrup in the whole bunch. Jason must be up to something. Uh, Jason, can you come come here a minute? Sure, Dad. What is it? Hey, Jason, you got me vanilla ice cream? Uh, sorry, pal. We're all out. I'll take strawberry. Haven't any of that either. Dad, we're running low on everything. Oh, don't shout it around. If people get to find out everything's in short supply, there'll be a panic. Mr. Gorgon has cut our supplies of medicines, cosmetics, ice cream, everything. Jack Terry told me that his milk and meat deliveries were getting fewer and further between. Hey, Jason, when are we getting started? Jason, did you call a town meeting here in the store? You guessed it, Dad. Uh, folks, let's make it quiet so a few of us can talk one at a time. I don't have to tell you that there's been a big change in our town... There's nothing to panic about because I think we can deal with it. My dad was telling me supplies he's ordered are being held up. Jack Terry's getting low on meat and dairy products. We all have to think about sharing what we have. Well, second that. And what's just as important, we have to try to find a way to get rid of that chain around our necks. I'm speaking of the new government. So I'd like to tell everyone to leave now before word gets to the wrong people. And for all of us to meet here next week at this time with good ideas and pitchforks, okay? Well, here's your girlfriend, Jason. Hi, Catherine. Oh, I am so angry. 
Can I sit at the counter a minute? For as long as you like. What is it, Catherine? That, Mr. Gorgon, and all those regulations from the satellite. They make me furious. What is it now? They still haven't opened the school, and I can't find out if they ever will. All our children wandering around town, nothing to do. You know what that Mr. Gorgon has organized for tonight? I heard that he's got a big picnic on the green for all the kids. He calls it the Young People's Club. He's laid out enough food to tempt every youngster in town. Well, what's wrong with that? Real hot dogs, hamburgers, potato chips, milk, candy. Things they haven't seen for months. I don't think that's a crime. But don't you know why he's doing it? Well, if it isn't Mr. Gorgon himself. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, gentlemen customers. Uh, Mr. Seth Cook, Mr. Jason Cook, Mrs. Emma Cook. I have intended to visit your pharmacy for some time. I have had much to do. Uh, may I sit next to you, miss? It's a free country. Oh, it was. Everyone may continue talking, please. Mr. Jason Cook, can you explain why everyone is suddenly so silent? I guess they have nothing to say. Parsnip Corner is not very friendly to visitors. Mr. Gorgon, the name of our town is Parsons Corner. Ah, you are Miss Catherine. I wish to talk to you about the school. There's nothing to talk about. Just have the doors unlocked and the teachers reinstated so we can all get on with our work. I beg pardon for correction. There is much to discuss. Did I say that clearly, Miss Catherine? When the new government decides what is permissible to teach, the doors will be opened. Yes? Miss, Miss Catherine? Mr. Jason Cook... Why is Miss Catherine not talking to me? I guess she's got nothing to say, like none of us. I have plenty to say. To begin with, I do not wish to be in the same room with this... this man. Sorry, but I'm leaving. Jason Cook, how have I offended Miss Catherine? You didn't offend her, friend. <laughs> you didn't even get up to bat. Up to bat? What does that mean? Haven't you discovered there are some people on earth who will not bow down and simply obey you? Some folks have got to be treated a little differently. I am beginning to understand. I value your instruction. I am a summa superba graduate of our highest institute. I am not what earth people call dense or thick or stupid. Where is your institute? On Atlantis, of course. What did you think? But Atlantis? Th that civilization disappeared many thousands of years ago. Let me assure you it is very much in existence. Atlantis is at the very center of the universe. But to return to Miss Catherine, she has a strange effect upon me. I do not wish to compel her to do anything... But I do wish she would try to understand and like me. I'll be darned. What does that mean? We know so little about you, the Atlanteans. It never occurred to me it mattered whether an Earth person liked you or not. I tell you candidly, Jason Cook, until now, it did not matter to me either. <laughs> It appears that one of these galactic aggressors has emotions similar to ours beneath that strange fabricated skin. Could that be his Achilles heel? How vulnerable is this highly programmed Mr. Gorgon? Are there limits to his super brain from Atlantis? Can he figure out how to deal with humans? We may find out when I return shortly with Act Two. A number of stars, the moon, the sun, as well as man-inhabited satellites, are now, in this year 2300, under the control of the invaders. Here on Earth, to a New England town, 
isolated from the mainstream of America and therefore unchanging for, for three centuries, a certain Mr. Gorgon has been sent to keep the new government. He looks somewhat like a man, except for a third eye in the back of his head. He is law, he is justice, and he is also instant death to anyone who defies him. Mom, that girl I'm going to marry, Catherine, she's got no fear whatsoever. Catherine's a wonder, an example to the rest of us. Well, I'd say she'd better watch her step. Talk to her, Jason. Tell her to go easy. Dad, she won't listen to me. I I heard Gorgon was taken with her. Yeah, but that'll wear off. He's not a human, so we can't expect him to have the same feelings about her that you would. Get his dander up and poof, where's Catherine? Gone, gone like Sheriff Barnaby. I hadn't thought of it that way. You're right. Why antagonize uh, He's a puppet of their system. He's programmed. I'll go, Dad. It's Catherine. Hello, Jason. Who were you expecting? I was expecting the girl I'm going to marry. Sit down, Catherine. Might as well come right out with it. I wasn't too happy about the way you spoke up to Mr. Gorgon in the store. I can't stand creeps, especially creeps from outer space. No, not that you've got to be more diplomatic, child, for everybody's good. How important is it to you that the school is opened and classes begin? The most important thing in the world. Right. And what would you do to win over Mr. Gorgon so he'd permit it? Anything. Practically anything. Well, you won't get anywhere by acting the way you did. Kathy, these are dangerous times for us. Not only in this town, but everywhere. The invaders want it all their way, but they're smart enough to realize that if they blow the on everyone, millions of us might disappear. So they keep us in line by making examples like Gorgon did with poor Sheriff Barnaby. Vaporized him. I was standing right next to him. It was awful. He... He just pointed that tube at him, and I'll never forget it. Kathy, we have to use our ingenuity to get around creatures like Gorgon by being smart and not stubborn. What can I do? Well, for starters, don't make him angry at us. I have an idea. Gorgon is really keen on you, Catherine. If you're nice to him, maybe he'll get the school opened and maybe he'll close that third eye and leave us alone. You don't know what you're asking. I, I should be nice to that? That, that ugly brute? No, there, there are degrees, child. If he wants to talk to you, why shouldn't you talk to him? Just, just, just talk. Sweetheart, be civil to him. Who knows? As I say, he might just get up and go and leave us alone. Are you telling me to actually date this Gorgon? He likes you. What harm could it do? And it could do a lot of good. I think I'll go now. Good night, gentlemen. Can you blame the girl? I suppose not. But at the time, I thought Catherine was short-sighted. The next crack out of the barrel was Gorgon's clever way of getting to all the youngsters in town. One afternoon, there he was in some kind of yellow, hovering saucer right overhead, talking to every single boy and girl in Parsons' Corner. My young friend, this is Mr. Gorgon. If you look up into the sky, you will see me in a round, yellow object. I am inside here. Wouldn't it be fun to be flying up here with me over your town? Come tonight to the school gymnasium. I have a big surprise for all of you and prizes. No grown-ups allowed. I will be there and we will have great fun. Jason and Emma and I wanted to know what kind of a wingding he was throwing in the gymnasium, so we snuck up the back stairs to the balcony over the gym, and we watched. Kids, I have met some of you. 
I want us all to be friends. Probably you have heard about the invaders. A new government and the best for everyone. I know some of your parents and other grown-ups say differently, but we know grown-ups can be wrong, don't we? This palaver went on for five minutes or so, and then all of a sudden, the real purpose of getting all the youngsters together come out. And you, and you, and you can help us make sure everyone believes in the invaders. If... You ever hear any grown-up, an older friend, even a brother, or a mother, or a father, who says in your own home he doesn't think Mr. Gorgon is doing the right thing, you come to see me, privately. If you do, the boy or girl that tells me will be rewarded. Every boy or girl who gives such information will receive a two-seater hovercraft just like the one you saw me fly in this afternoon. Pandemonium. But it worked, I'm sad to report. In the days that followed, more than a few parents and adults were accused by their young ones, taken to the town hall for questioning and... Uh, Whoosh. They were made to disappear with a silver tube. But after three weeks of that, things seemed to calm down. Have you noticed, Seth, how everything's sort of more normal these days? Well, I sure noticed it Monday when my supplier showed up with 24 gallons of ice cream in eight different flavors. Emma, I just may have to enlarge the counter. And those medicines and drugs I had on order for the last six months? Seth, they were delivered at the old price. I wonder how things are up the street. Jason, have you talked to Jack Terry at the grocery store lately? Yeah, I have, Dad. He's okay. He says he's getting all the produce he needs. Somebody's relaxed the regulations. Maybe it's Mr. Gorgon. Uh, that's funny. What, what, what's happened to old three eyes? I don't see him around town nearly as much as I used to. Dad, I can't work in the store anymore. Why not? How can I serve some kids at the soda fountain and not others? Oh, why would you do that? Dish up ice cream to a boy who ratted on his parents and they've been liquidated? Oh. I, and I don't know which kid did what or to whom. It's wrong to suspect all children, but how do you know? Jason, we're trying to forget all that. But they were our kids from this town. They had their friends or relatives destroyed for a hovercraft. I've had it with this town. When I know where to go, I'm leaving. But how are you going to get an exit visa? I don't need an exit visa. Just an overcast sky and a dark night. It uh, isn't the children that are making you unhappy. It's Catherine, isn't it? I guess so. Have you talked to her? No. I haven't even seen her. She hasn't been to the house, I know, but I thought maybe you two... She were... hasn't been anywhere. Not with me. With him? Yes. Mr. Gorkin? With him? How long has she been doing that? When did you see Catherine last? Uh, a month ago. It'll be four weeks tonight. You were saying how things have quieted down? It's because of Catherine. I could kick myself from here to Saturn and back because it was I who gave her the idea to date that creature. The things were not as normal as they seemed on the surface. I'm sorry to say the only businesses that made money sold flowers and caskets and cemetery plots. More and more people would meet at the back of the store or in my house at night. Everyone agreed we had to get rid of Mr. Gorgon somehow. There's only one sure way. He has got to die. Jason, I don't think those invader people die like we do. Oh, we've got to try everything, anything. A bullet, a knife, poison. Maybe all three. Well, I never thought I'd actually think of killing someone. I'm for trying the easiest way first. 
poison. We've got to get him into the store, see? And I'll give him a concoction of ice cream, cherries, nuts, whipped cream, and what have you, the like of which he'll never, ever be able to eat again. <laughs> I was just going to turn out the porch light. Now, come on in. Mayor, what brings you here so late? I wanted to see your father, Jason. Oh, he was so tired, he went up to bed an hour ago. Is it something I could help you with? Well, I was going to show him this piece of paper. Mr. Gorgon gave it to me. That's unbelievable. He can't get away with this. Well, I'm afraid he can, Jason, and he will. Get away with what? Emma, take a look. I'm supposed to have a thousand handbills made by tomorrow morning with this written on it. I don't want to see what it says. If it weren't so awful, it'd be funny. Every man and woman residing in Parsons Corner is requisitioned to make up a workforce to build a new large town jail. He said to me the old jail isn't going to be big enough to accommodate the lucky ones. What did he mean, the lucky ones? Well, I, I, I took it to mean that... Those whose infractions are not serious enough to warrant that metal tube and disappearance. Mayor, what would happen if every single person in this town just went on strike, refused to build that new jail? Uh, he'd get it built outside help from the Central Committee. Now, tell your dad about this in the morning, will you? Fortunately, the only printing press in town's on the brink, and it'll be a while before we get new parts. Back to your classes. Come on, Jimmy. Put that football back in the locker. Go on, everybody. Run inside. Well, hello, Catherine. Oh, Jason. What brings you to our playground? I see they opened up your school again. Oh, just for the little ones. They haven't got a curriculum for the older children yet. Uh, my father and mother were asking about you. Oh? Are they pleased with the way things are easing up? Oh, yeah. A lot of people are pleased. The ones who aren't in jail are dead. You've been busy? No, oh, pretty much. I've been learning a lot about the invaders. What planet they came from, their beliefs. Who's your teacher? Mr. Gordon. <laughs> How nice for you. Jason, I know what I'm doing. I hope so. So, you're learning about the master space race. And what are you teaching Gorgon in return? Anything about those old-fashioned, outmoded beliefs of Tom Jefferson or Abe Lincoln? He's interested in our history. He wants to know everything, right up to the present. Has a real taste for America, has he? That's true. Wants to know what we like and what we dislike. You ought to bring him into the store, Catherine. I don't think he's been there since that first time. No, he hasn't. I bet he's never tasted a good old American hot fudge sundae. Or one of my special three-flavor delights. Why don't you bring him around sometime? Oh, you wouldn't mind? Why should I mind? We know what's at the back of Jason's mind. We don't know where he's hidden the poison or how he plans to submerge its distinctive cyanide almond flavor. But we'll find out. It takes a lot of nerve when your intended victim has an eye in the back of his head. I shall return shortly with Act Three. Turn to the town of Parsons Corner in the year 2300. The world has been conquered by a civilization that never died. Atlantis. So highly developed it could skip through time and space. Emissaries have been sent to various cities and towns in America to intimidate and rule. Mr. Gorgon is particularly good at that, for he has an atomic means of making the recalcitrant disappear. Jason Cook has a more primitive approach and is trying for a combination of ingredients he hopes will be a deadly dessert. Mr. Gorgon, you and Catherine sit yourselves comfortably at the counter, and you can watch me whip up what we're famous for in Cook's Ice Cream Parlor. Thank you. You'll enjoy watching him. Jason's a real artist. I am looking forward to this experience of a great American delicacy. 
This dish is sweet. It has many flavors. And it is cold. Cold? Ah, oh, it's very cold. The colder, the better. What Jason is doing now is slicing the banana. It's chopping the walnuts. All the essential ingredients of his galaxy special. Ah, uh, yes, special. He uses chocolate ice cream representing the Earth, vanilla ice cream for the sun, and strawberry for Mars. Now he lays the sliced bananas at the bottom of your dish. Well, what's that there, Jason? Pineapple? Something new? The rings of Saturn. Well, there goes the chocolate ice cream. And a scoop of vanilla. Now you notice I use a big dipper. And the strawberry. And now a few squirts of fruit syrup. Palmyra fig. Passion fruit. Passion fruit. We do not have that on our planet. I didn't think so. What is that you're pointing at me? A gun? Uh, calm down, old buddy. All it's loaded with is whipped cream. That we call our Milky Way. A few cherries for meteors and a final fallout of chopped walnuts. Jason, that is beautiful. <laughs> and a dab of marshmallow and a few chocolate kisses. Mr. Gorgon, it's all yours. You got a spoon, a napkin, and a glass of water? Enjoy yourself. Well, what about mine, Jason? I want exactly the same. Uh, you wait your turn. I want to watch our friend discover one of the great pleasures of our planet. I will proceed. I don't know what to expect, but I am certain it will pleasure me. Oh, it will be an experience unlike anything you have ever had before. Uh, bear in mind, Mr. Gorgon, many of the flavors we Americans enjoy may seem a little strange to you. A mixture of sweet and sour, bitter and sugar, and a faint undertaste of almond. Dig in, and believe me, I'm going to enjoy watching something happen to you that has never happened before. I hope. Do you like the ice cream? It's good, isn't it? I, I don't know. Is it? <clears throat> Not the taste I expected. Oh, 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 what is wrong? I feel... What is it? <laughs> Mr. Gordon, I was told later, had swallowed a few sizable mouthfuls of Jason's specialty. He got down from his stool, his hand to his throat, and he stood up, holding on to the counter. The third eye in the back of his head started blinking very fast. Mr. Gordon, what's the matter? Oh, foolish child. Stupid. What did you think you were doing to me? Are you all right? Would you like me to get you a doctor? Your human doctors are no help. You have made me very angry, Jason Cook. Anger is an emotion we invaders reject categorically. Well, I thought you would enjoy it. I had no idea this would happen. You knew nothing, Catherine? Am I to believe that? Well, I'm sorry. It didn't agree with you. <sighs> Catherine... Will you finish this for me? Of course. I love Jason's concoction. Uh, no, don't. Uh, you see, there is some painful substance in there from which perhaps a mortal would not recover. Well, you saw everything that went in that dish. Did I? Is that true? Jason put something in the ice cream? I would not let you taste it and perhaps die. I wish... You to remain alive, Catherine. You're out of your head, Gorgon. Only humans are out of their heads. In my planet, computations do not permit errors. None can malfunction. No, we are never unbalanced. It is you, Jason Cook, who malfunctions. And so you must be destroyed. No, please don't. I beg you, don't do it. Jason Cook is an aberration who will always be out of step with me. Catherine, stand away from him. Gordon pointed his laser tube at Jason, and my son just disappeared. 
I didn't feel right for a long time after that, and Emma, well, I won't go into that. After Jason had gone, we never saw Catherine again. Until one day, we learned why. I have an announcement to make to the people of Parsons Corner. As before, when you heard a voice coming at you from the sky, you looked up and... Sure enough, there was Mr. Gorgon's hovercraft spinning over the village green. I am getting married this coming Saturday to Catherine, your favorite school teacher. To celebrate our union, the village green will be filled with food and music. All free. Come one. Come all. Nobody came. Not a soul. The ceremony was at noon, and the whole town stayed home. The married couple, Catherine, who he loved as a daughter, and the creature with three eyes who had terrorized the town, they come out of the town hall with the mayor behind them. The streets in the village green remained empty. So they got into the yellow hovercraft and took off, making one low pass over the town. To brighten this already happy day, we now release all those who have been imprisoned. They are made free. The jail doors swung wide. Those who had been put there silently went home. There was no celebrating. Everyone was too frightened of Mr. Gorgon and his ultimate powers. So this is what you call a motel. Do I say it correctly, Catherine? My English... It gets better every day. Uh, after the ceremony, man and wife, they go to a place like this. These little one-story boxes all attached. And spend their first night together. Some do. Some travel on a space shuttle or... Some underwater to one of the sea cities. After all, in the year 2300, one must do something up to date. I look around this room and everything is very well organized and equipped. Ah, I have never taken a water shower. And I see there is one. I will do it now. I must say... The application of small streams of water has a refresh. Catherine? Where are you? Catherine? Why are all the room lights turned off? Catherine! Are you outside this door, I wonder? Ah, there you are. Why are you standing here outside our room? Are you perhaps saying goodbye to your old life in Parsons Corner? Catherine, what are you doing? Giving you a taste of your own terror. Don't point at it. You'll invalidate me. Don't move. Goodbye, Mr. Gorgon. We, we were sitting down to dinner, Emma and I, not hungry at all. Our hearts filled with sadness, knowing this should have been the day of our Jason's marriage to Catherine. And then suddenly we heard voices on the porch. It was Catherine talking to someone. It's really you, Jason? You're alive? You're here? Oh, I, I'm not dreaming. Darling, Catherine. Yes, I'm very much here. Well, where have you been? I thought we all thought... I'm going to ask you to try to believe something Earth people have been wondering about for thousands of years. Talk about a dream. I've visited a dream world and have come back. Jason, it's you. Yes, it is, Dad. Oh, you're not dead. Oh, my boy, it's so good to see you. You too, Dad. Emma, Emma, it's all right. Prayers do come true. It's Jason. He's here. 
Come on inside. I, I couldn't get your mother to leave the table. We we heard you talking to Catherine, and Emma thought she she was hearing a ghost. <laughs> well, we don't have ghosts in the 23rd century. Where to begin? That's the problem. Oh, Jason, why don't you start when Mr. Gorgon pointed his destruct tube at you? I didn't feel anything at all, but I found myself transported to Atlantis. Yes, the real, actual Atlantis, Mr. Gorgon's own civilization. Uh, where is that, on, on another planet? Uh, Dad, I have no idea where it is in space or time. I know Atlanteans have the power to move backwards or forwards in time as we know it, but that's all I know. What did you see? Uh, I was suddenly standing in a large hall in front of three judges. An interesting thing about that place. Not only does time telescope, but so does knowledge. I didn't have to be told anything. I just knew. You knew what? There's no question the invaders who are here on Earth are Atlanteans who, after thousands of years, are reclaiming the universe as their own. And who do you think I saw from down here? I don't know. Who? Sheriff Barnaby and all the others from Parsons Corner who'd been shot there with that destruct gun. Almost every day, more people from town kept showing up. And then Mr. Gorgon himself is there. He's apologizing to the judges. They tell him that he's failed in his mission. I didn't understand that at all. I did that. Pointed his own ray gun at him. I'll tell you all about it, Jason. Gorgon was taken away, and the three judges decided all of us from Parsons Corner were to return to Earth. So it's not only me... We're all back. But for how long? There'll be other invaders. Well, there may be, but they'll have to change a lot of their concepts. You see, that tube thing Mr. Gorgon used, it's still here. Gorgon left it when he was liquidated. So for the present, the Atlanteans are just watching and waiting to see what we'll do. Well, you know what that means. We can go from town to town wherever there's a Mr. Gorgon making life miserable, point this at him, and poof, we've shot the invader back to Atlantis. Well, can we risk it? Risk? Well, how do you think this country got started anyway? Somebody wanted to take us over, and we sent them back right where they come from. Dad is right, Catherine. Let's do it. <laughs> This much is history. In the year 2300, Parsons Corner spread the word from town to town and state to state how to deal with the invaders. In the old days, pioneers built stockades to keep the blood out and the good in. We all may have to do that again. Build a stockade of true belief against those who would destroy us. I shall return shortly. We have turned the clock forward. Now let us turn it back to 1775 and hear from a man who knew a lot about those who would rob you of freedom. He left these words in our safekeeping. He said, I know not what course others may take, but give me liberty or give me death. Thank you for the warning, Mr. Patrick Henry. Our cast included Arnold Moss, Don Scardino, Evie Juster, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you've enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search bar. Until then, thanks for listening.